no schedule to keep we're all enjoying Jesus just sitting at his feet if you could see me now I walk the streets of gold if you could see me now I'm standing tall and whole see me now, you know I've seen his face, if you can see me now, you know the pains you raise, you wouldn't want me to ever leave. see me now if you could only see me Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven. What a day! rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory while we walk the pilgrim pathway cloud 
clouds will over spread the sky but when traveling days are over not a shadow not a something to look forward to. Thank you, Lord. This next song, I think Sister Cheryl wanted us to sing, I'll Fly Away. Celestial shore, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, oh, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this life have grown now I'll fly away like a bird from prison bars has flown service for our sister and our friend, Barbara Gordon. We're here to celebrate a life that I can only think of one word that really describes it best, and that is extraordinary. Extraordinary. There was nothing ordinary. (laughs) 
about Barbara Gordon. <laughs> and it's an honor, it's an honor to be here to celebrate this life and the fact that her life is not over, right. but it's just begun. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Then in John, he said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. Today we're in the presence of God. And we are experiencing the presence of the Lord the best that we can in this life. But Paul put it this way, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And today I want to tell you that we, we enjoy the presence of God that we can experience here on this earth. But Barbara Gordon is in the presence of God face to face. There's no more sickness. Right. There's no more pain. There's no more confusion. But she's with the Lord today Amen. because she made her choice. And because of what Jesus did for her. Amen. So today, we're here for two reasons. We're here because she left us behind. <laughs> and we're trying to deal with that. And Jesus said, I will come to you. Barbara doesn't need comfort. We need comfort. And Jesus said, I will come to you. I won't leave you comfortless. He's here right now. My Amen. prayer is that he would minister to you in a real way so that you would know the same Jesus that Barbara is with face to face right now. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for one more day. I thank you for one more day. I'm going to introduce myself, especially to the online viewers that will be watching. My name is Linda Adkins, Reverend Linda Adkins. I'm the assistant pastor at Kingdom Gate Pentecostal Church. I'm also Barbara Gordon's daughter-in-law. It is my privilege to read the obituary today, and then if you'll allow me, I have a few personal comments to make as well. Barbara Gordon was born on April 2nd, 1935 in Manhattan, New York. Her father, Reuben Gordon, her mother, Sadie Rossner. At the age of 85, she took her final rest on September 19th, 2020. Her surviving family includes her two daughters, Cheryl Adkins, Lee Shackelford, two grandchildren, Lauren Williams, Reed Shackelford, three great-grandchildren, Milan Henry and Isley Williams, three sisters, Carol Mora, Ivy Austin, and Kim Gordon, five nieces and nephews, Adam and Paris Mora, Allie Perlman, and Oliver and Nolan Marsh. Barbara had a full life, an adventurous life. You'll hear some stories specific to that today. In 1956, she married and left New York for Grand Rapids, Michigan. There, she settled and raised two beautiful daughters. She worked full-time while maintaining involvement in civic and circle theater, acting, dancing, and set design. In 1979, she relocated to the Los Angeles area to be near her sister. There, she held administrative positions at both Disneyland Hotel and Warner Brothers. In 1999, she retired to Sedona, Arizona to be near her daughter and her granddaughter. Barbara was a lifelong learner. Never saw her without a book. She was an avid reader. She carried the book all the time. She earned certificates in photography and commercial art while she was in Brooklyn, New York. In Grand Rapids, she studied business law, writing, and communications. In Los Angeles, her formal studies included computers and word processing. Even after retiring in Sedona, she continued to study computers. She had a lifetime of adventures and stories like the African safari she took at the age 70. She was an artist. We have some of her work displayed in the back here today. In her last few years, though, she mostly just talked about her family. There was nothing more important than that and than them to her. She left a lasting impression on everyone she knew. As you think of Barbara, always remember to laugh, to say yes to adventures, and do whatever it takes to hold your family near and dear. Just a few comments of my own. I am going to be brief. I met Barbara almost 10 years ago. I was dating her daughter. It was then that she had just relocated to Phoenix and had begun her 10-year battle with Alzheimer's. We shared love and a lot of laughter. She loved to laugh, and I'm funny, so it worked out. <laughs> And that worked out. <laughs> In 2012, she started attending our church regularly. And that's the rest of what I'm going to talk about to my Kingdom Gate church family. Cheryl would pick her up every Sunday for service. And then we would enjoy a delicious meal after church. I know that her church family has fond memories of her dancing through the back door at 10 after 2. <laughs> or 2.15. For those that don't know, church starts at 2 o'clock. She used to tell me, this is like coming to a party every week. This is just like a party. We're going to go eat after. Or it's 2, right? 
right. Oh my goodness, did she love the music. You hear about how much she always loved music all of her life. She loved this praise team, loved them so much. I remember one of her first services. The praise team was singing. Of course, they were, they were doing an, an awesome job, and they stopped, and she started clapping, and she said, Bravo! <laughs> bravo! Bravo! <laughs> and she you meant it. Thank you, Jesus. She was attentive and responsive to the preaching and the voice of her senior pastor. She is responsive and she bathed in the presence of God when she was in service with us. My special memories of her were and always will be during service when all of their struggles were left outside. God's presence does not require memory. Her secret place with God held for her a peace that passed her understanding. And those of us that spent time with her in service know this in our spirit. I'm comforted by that today. Above all, there was one special service. There was one special day. And I was right next to her. Pastor was praying over her. God filled her with his spirit and the evidence of tongues came forth when she received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible tells us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The only hope, the only comfort I know to share is that eternal life ensures that I will see her again. I will see her again. I extend a huge Heartfelt thank you to my Kingdom Gate family for doing what we do in loving and ministering to Barbara. And they are here. I also extend a personal thank you to Mother Dear's Place, to Tina and to JJ, who looked after her in her final years. Thank you so much. Thank you for your love and care for her. Thank you. Mama Barbara, thanks for the love. Thanks for the laughter. I will miss you. Until we meet again. Praise team.
until we meet, until we meet again. When we reach that promised land, and we're standing hand in hand, may He give us strength to stand until we meet, we meet again. We meet again. Come on, sing this with us. Till we walk those streets of gold, where we'll never grow, we'll find rest for our soul. We'll find rest. We'll find rest. My grandmother was a smart, independent, spitfire of a woman. She had a passion for learning new things and a strong type A personality to help her perfect all of her new adventures. She studied art and photography. She took an interest in computers, health, and exercise long before they were popular. She loved concerts, music, dancing, plays. She loved people, she loved socializing. But most of all, I think she really loved just being a wild card. She would tell stories of riding a motorcycle and carrying a knife in her boot. But as she got older, she was a meticulous woman who always had her nails done and a lipstick in her pocket. I had the pleasure of being her only grandchild for 19 years. I spent a lot of time with her when I was younger. We would go to the beach and search for seashells. We would take those seashells back to her place in California and clean them up, paint them, turn them into necklaces, craft with them. <laughs> I don't know what she did with those, those seashells. She probably threw them away when I left. <laughs> she also worked at Disneyland Hotel. And during that time, I got to visit Disneyland so many times, I can't even count. Disneyland was like my playground. I would drag my grandmother all over that park. She would say, I'm too old to go on that ride. You go wait in line. I'll be right here on this bench. When we got home, she would say, okay, I'm gonna help you settle down. And I'm gonna make you a warm glass of milk. Can we just take a second? Warm milk is gross. It's not good. I didn't want it even then, but I drank it. Where'd she learn that? <laughs> uh, then she would sit next to me on the bedside and she would take those long nails and she would stroke and tickle my arm, and put me to sleep. <laughs> Eventually, she moved to Arizona and our bond strengthened. 
We would tease each other, poke fun at one another, <laughs> go out together, go to new restaurants. We had a good time. But as her Alzheimer's progressed, it was me she trusted to do things she didn't trust other people to do. She would let me paint her nails and do things for her, take her out without her wallet. She always wanted to know where her wallet was. <laughs> I'd tell her, Grandma, it's my turn to take care of you. It's okay. Those are the memories I'm gonna have of my grandmother. I'll miss her very much. And now Lauren's mother is coming and we're gonna hear Cheryl's tribute to her mother. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Yes. Corinthians 2.9 Thank you for coming to celebrate my mother's home going. I had a pretty different kind of mom. <laughs> she wasn't the baking in the kitchen kind of mom. Uh, she was the kind of mom all my friends thought was super cool, beautiful. But they knew she'd yell at them too if they did something <laughs> stupid. <laughs> She had a really uh, cool sense of music style. She was always up to date in her music. And she went on a trip to Jamaica and came home with a bunch of reggae records. <laughs> My mom and friends and myself, we danced all over the living room to that music. I'm not even sure anyone even knew who Bob Marley was at that time. This was probably when I was mm, junior high. My mom, my sister, Lee, and I, usually a friend or two, we'd all go to Lake Michigan to Saugatuck, an adorable little town and a great beach. One person would get to ride on the back of mom's motorcycle. And we'd all get the, the rest of us would get in a car. We'd grill out there and we'd play all day and go home in the evening. It was only like a 45 minute drive from Grand Rapids to Lake Michigan. It was a great place. Those were pretty fun memories. Not all memories were fun, but glad I learned from what wasn't fun. She liked a clean house, everything put back after using it, whatever it was. She wanted the floors clean a certain way, had to be her way. And she worked a split shift and I had to cook all the dinners. Hence, I'm a good cook. <laughs> She made sure I had a Better Homes and Garden cookbook that I still have today. Mom loved flowers, which is a beautiful memory I have. Our backyard was full of them. Irises lined the backyard, the back of our house. Lilac bushes, 10 feet tall on the other side. Poor Lee had to mow the lawn. I did not have to. I was cooking. After Lee and I moved out, Mom moved to Seal Beach, California, walking distance to the ocean. She loved it there, and we loved visiting. We all loved that she lived there. <laughs> Mom lived 12 years in Sedona after California. She never lived anywhere like Sedona before, and she loved it there. It's there she found Jesus and went to Wayside Church. She was excited she was a Messianic Jew now. I didn't quite understand at that point. Right. right. Well, little did I know, huh? <laughs> All right. When she moved to Phoenix, she was excited. I was going to this church with the lively music and the loving people, and she wanted to come every single Sunday. So I brought her every Sunday. That's right. Everyone has different memories and marks that mom left in their lives. I'm so glad my church family got to know her and love her. Thank you for treating her with such tender, 
love. I really appreciated that. And I know you truly loved her. Barbara's other daughter, Lee, has flown all across, uh, clear across the country to be here today, and so we're going to welcome her at this time to come and share some thoughts about her mother. Thank you. And yes, I am known as the other daughter. <laughs> My mother would always say, um, I have another daughter. I have another daughter. And that's me. My name is Lee. <laughs> My mother was one of the most beautiful women. Yes. I attribute a lot of my success to her in the areas of her intelligence and her physical fitness. My mother taught me the value of hard work, never to take anything for granted, and always follow my dreams. Growing up in a single parent home, my mother worked very hard to ensure that we had a nice home and we lived in a beautiful neighborhood in East Grand Rapids, Michigan. There was always food on the table. On the table, though, there always consists of rice. She would even make it kind of different and she would color the rice. It might be purple one day, <laughs> green, orange, and even red. Um, I just think she wanted to change it up and make me believe that we were eating something different. <laughs> you know. Although she worked a full-time job, she never missed one of my ball games. Yo, know, it was quite easy to pick her out in the stand. Everyone in the stand would be sitting there, and there would be my mother, screaming at the top of her lungs, standing, that's my daughter, that's my daughter. <laughs> oh, I love her. <laughs> my love for music came from my mother. In our house, the music was always playing. I still love the old tunes, Van Morrison, James Taylor, Joni Mitchell, Melanie, and even she had the album Woodstock. And I learned about Pink Floyd, and I even took her album. <laughs> I did. Mom always had a motorcycle. The legend is real. She <laughs> rode the motorcycle. Yes, she rode a Kawasaki 175. Uh-huh. She was my cool mom. She would have fringe on her blue jeans, and off she went. <laughs> As she aged and her health deteriorated, it was hard for me because I was so far away. In case you don't know, I live in North Carolina. During our visits when I did come, I enjoyed my time with her, but I missed the mom I once knew. I am so thankful for the people that cared for her and helped her stay connected with her family. My mother got to Zoom just even a few weeks ago and it was so special to us that we got to see her. And she may not have recognized all our faces, but she was still sitting there and talking and saying, I love you, I love all of you. And it was, it was very special, thank you. I'm gonna miss you, Mom. You had a good life. I have lots of memories. I am who I am because of you, Mom. I love you. Lance Pence, I had the honor and the privilege of getting to know 
Barbara here at the church in just the last few years of her life. I really hear these cool stories and wish I'd have known her a lot earlier than that. <laughs> but one thing I remember the most right off the bat is she smiled all the time when I first met her. She always had a smile on her face. And uh, I love, as Linda mentioned, the dancing from the back door. Much like what you saw in the video, that's pretty much how she made it all the way up to her seat. And we always sat behind her, so I got to watch that. It was great. <laughs> She, her worship was contagious. You couldn't help it. And she was engaged, whether the music was fast, whether the music was slow. She was engaged in the worship. She enjoyed it so much. Best time, though, they were both standing there, Cheryl and her mom, worshiping. And Barbara got so excited, she high-fived Cheryl and went right on with her worship. <laughs> it was kind of hard for me to stay engaged in worship at that moment. <laughs> The lipstick, everybody's mentioned it. I had to smile when I saw Renee's uh, bouquet. We all wore the mark of Barbara after church. You knew who had greeted Barbara and who hadn't because we didn't wipe it off until after. So it was a badge of honor to have a Barbara mark on her cheek. So. Even with all of her confusion of the current, she talked about the motorcycles she talked about playing stickball in the street with the boys. And Lee, she always mentioned your name. You weren't the other daughter. She always brought it around to, I have two daughters, Lee and Cheryl. Every conversation we ever had, she, that was, you could tell, even though her memory was going dim, that was very important to her. As these last few years wore on, we could notice the smile was starting to fade more. And as typical with Alzheimer's, there were more outbursts. There's just, it's just common. There was more confusion, sometimes paranoia. It happens. But Barbara was still in there. And we loved Barbara, clear to the end of it. We w walked her through all those issues that come with the disease. We loved her clear until the point she couldn't handle the stimulus anymore and was no longer able to join us here. And I was thinking, about the day she fell asleep, she woke up in heaven, Cheryl. Lee. She left her earthly body with a very diseased brain, no longer filtering life through that brain. Mm -hmm. And the soul that had been alive through all of this finally was at the feet of the one whose name she took in water baptism that you noticed. Amen. No more pain. The sorrow right now is only for us. So, that's it. This is an address change notification for Barbara. I've been living in this world for quite a long time, always looking for a place to call my own I was never quite satisfied with what I saw down here so I'm moving to my brand The place where I'm moving is lovely and new. There's a river that flows like crystal and walls of jasper too. The street in front of my house is made of purest gold. It's a place where we Better place 
And there will be no tears, no sorrow. There'll be no more pain. This is to tell you of my address change. And when I get there, I will be looking through town. I'll see loved ones and others I've known. There will be singing and Barbara dancing. We'll feel love all around. We'll hear Jesus say, child, welcome home. say goodbye to a loved one, what they truly would have to say to us if they could stand behind the pulpit. I believe Barbara would enjoy that we have celebrated her life because she loved life. It's very clear that she loved her life. But I also know that she's living now in eternity. And I know this, she would say, you all have everything backward. You think that the life that we spend down here is everything when it's just the smallest part leading to eternity, leading to real life, leading to eternal life. In the book of Hebrews, the word of God says, It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. This is an appointment that Barbara has kept, and each one of us is going to keep. One day, there's no loophole. There's no getting around it. It will happen. James put it this way. He said that this life It's just a vapor. It's here, and then it's over with. So today I want to draw our attention from the things that we celebrate in this life to the thing that all of Scripture points us to, and that is being prepared for what comes next. That's where Barbara is now. And she has finished her course. And she doesn't have any more challenges in this life to face. Psalm 39 and 4 says, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days. What it is that I may know how frail I am. Jesus said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I miss Barbara. All of us are going to miss Barbara. And we're celebrating this extraordinary life with the hope that this isn't a final farewell. There's one 
sure, and definite way that we know we can see her again. And that is by coming to know the same Jesus that Barbara knew. Barbara came to us late in her life. As a matter of fact, just eight years before she was going to cross the finish line. That's where we came to know her as her church family. And so we only had eight years to fall in love with her, but we did. Amen. Her family, of course, had her for much longer. But I have to, as her pastor, reflect on the assignment that God gave to us to love her in difficult times, in times where she could become confused and agitated. But each one of us, it's already been talked about, each one of us experienced the fact that she really, really knew about a sanctuary in the presence of the Lord. And she would come in from sometimes having a very difficult day very difficult day as her family would know from her disease but when she walked in the door something changed yep. and everything was different because her spirit yes. that had no disease right. her spirit that had been washed in the blood of Jesus her spirit became calm yep. and joyful yep. in the presence of a loving God and the difference was amazing. Amen. And through the entire time that she was in the worship and in the preaching and in the service, the moving of the Spirit of God, she had none of those issues. There was not one time in all of the years that she came to this church that she had any of those episodes that would overcome her sometimes on the outside from her disease. She was a witness, think about that, of the miraculous power of the presence of God. She was a witness wow. of what God can do, even in somebody who's suffering from a disease that robs you of your reason and rationale. And so she knew the Lord, maybe in a way that some of us never will. And she was an example of what God can do. Jesus said this in John, the 14th chapter. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Today, Barbara has finished her course. Every test that she will ever face before eternity has concluded, and she is in the presence of a loving God. She's in the presence of the one that laid down his life for her so that she didn't have to perish eternally but would have eternal life. But today, we're still facing the challenges of this life, this vapor of existence, this test of what eternity will look like for each one of us. Why do we bring a celebration of life to a place of examination? It's because Barbara would want you to be where she is right now. And the way to have eternal life is to listen to the words of Jesus that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm going to ask you to stand at this time, and I would like for you to take the hand of the person next to you. I know that there are those who could not be here, 
and you're watching this online. And I want you to participate in this as if you were sitting right here in this church. And I hope that you can feel the same presence of Almighty God that is here right now in this place. Would you bow your head with me? And I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to repeat the words after me, the same prayer that Barbara prayed in her life that brought her the promise of eternal life. Whether you've prayed this before or whether this is your first time, would you repeat these words after me, but make this your prayer and pray it from your heart. Jesus, I know you're alive. And I thank you that you died for my sins. I've made mistakes. And I need you in my life please forgive me of my sins cleanse me from all unrighteousness come into my heart right now and bring me that same eternal life that you gave to Barbara thank you for saving me thank you for eternal life in Jesus name amen
Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this life. I thank you that we had the privilege of loving Sister Barbara. I thank you, Lord, that now, even as we say goodbye to her, we can feel your presence in this place. A witness of the fact that she's in your hands today. She's in your loving hands. God, I pray over the family that is grieving. Jesus, you did say that I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And I know that that is happening even this moment, even for those that are watching this online. Lord, I know that your presence is filling each room where people are watching this memorial and this celebration, this homegoing, because it's not over, but she's with you. She's alive today, and we will meet again. Lord, touch the family, touch the friends that will miss her until we meet again. Lord, go with us, and Lord, we'll keep her close in our hearts, but I pray that somehow, Lord, that you will remind us of the things that we need to keep in perspective. Lord, the veil is very thin between this life and the next today. We can almost catch a glimpse. We can almost see, Lord, what comes maybe very soon for some of us. Lord, we want to be ready. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this family. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the assurance that we don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. But we can be safe in the hands of Jesus should our time come. Thank you for that comfort today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Praise God. I want to thank you on behalf of Barbara's family, on behalf of the Kingdom Gate family for coming to pay your respects and to experience this homegoing service. Once again, thank you very much. God bless you. And Barbara, we'll see you soon.